The food delivery business is winner take all and it has been a wild battleground for the last five years. Whole mountains of capital have been hurled at consumers just trying to make you stick with one particular app. And after all that, we're finally seeing the delivery market consolidate into two major players. But let's start with this insane graph. Who do you think is winning the delivery wars right now? I honestly thought it was Uber Eats just because Uber just dominates everything. But in the last three years, look at this. DoorDash has absolutely crushed the competition, finally achieving a majority share of delivery spend here in America, over 50%. This is a wild change in fortunes in one of the most competitive industries we have right now. Delivery on its face is one of those rare industries where it's a winner-takes-all system. We can't have these giant tech companies burn through cash trying to win customer loyalty forever. Only one of them is going to win. And looking back at this chart, you'd be pretty justified in saying that it's probably going to be DoorDash in one of the greatest upsets in business history. But this chart is misleading in a lot of subtle ways. Give me a minute to hit you with some context and I'll show you some more illuminating data. And really, that's what we're doing here today. Let's look under the hood at the two top contenders in delivery. Uber Eats and DoorDash are locked in a brutal struggle for dominance after knocking out an Elite Eight's worth of competition. But of these two, who's gonna come out on top? Let's find out. Hey, welcome to Moby.co. If you like company breakdowns that give you a better sense of the market forces shaping your world, subscribe to this channel. And if you don't, look, I get it. Most people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. Either way, it's DoorDash versus Uber. Let's fight. The delivery industry has really kicked off over the last decade thanks to players like Grubhub and Seamless, who joined together a bunch of disparate restaurants with their own delivery infrastructure into a united app. This was messy, kinda weird, but still amazing because it made ordering food way easier. Plus it meant you basically never had to talk to a person again, even to get food. Then Uber Eats came along with its unified driver ecosystem and streamlined the whole process and then quickly dominated in cities where Uber was already popular. Now there have been some, you know, issues, but Uber rode its dominance in rideshare to a strong position in delivery. Meanwhile, a bunch of niche and luxury options popped up too. 2018 was an absolutely wild year to be ordering food online in a major city in America, as everyone from Seamless to Postmates to Caviar to Slice to Eat24 was just heaving money and discounts and promotions at its customers. And that spend and competition is the biggest part of this business. From the moment Uber entered food delivery, the consensus of analysts and venture capitalists has been this is a really winner-take-all market. The average consumer isn't going to constantly switch from app to app to when to order food or whatever. One of these companies is going to have the best service at the best price, and that's the company who's gonna win in the long run, which is right about the moment DoorDash enters the story. To keep this as short as possible, DoorDash played this game from a slightly different angle. It beats Grubhub by having a fleet of their own delivery drivers and eliminates Uber's complexity by only focusing on delivery instead of like delivery and rideshare or world domination or whatever it is that Travis Kalanick wanted. And amazingly, this model has stood up to Uber pretty well since 2018. And again, look at this chart. Clearly DoorDash did something right when it entered the market and quickly started dominating. But like I said, this chart is a little misleading. This is United States market share. Sure, the US is the most valuable delivery market in the world, but how does that compare to total sales and market share? And in the battle of Uber versus DoorDash, <sighs> I mean, come on, Uber is just on another planet. They aren't quite double DoorDash, but they're pretty close. But remember, getting to this level of revenue is expensive. The main way delivery apps have coaxed new customers into joining their platform is via discounts, promotion, and in some cases just straight up free food. Uber has burned through a lot of cash maintaining its 26% share of the US food market. Meanwhile, on the DoorDash side of things, they've been a lot more lean, only losing about $2 billion in the same time period. Which is honestly a really unfair comparison because because this is the totality of Uber's expenses versus just delivery on the DoorDash side. From this time period, it's kind of hard to break down where all the expenses for Uber Eats versus the rest of Uber were coming in. So instead, let's go ahead and look at 2021, where we can kind of break this down quarter by quarter and see what's going on. And again, looking at this chart, DoorDash has kept its losses pretty flat. It's expanding aggressively, but maintaining a similar level of cost. They're being super efficient, whereas Uber obviously is kind of all over the place. And you'll notice that I blurred out the second half of this graph because honestly, I got a plot twist coming, but I need to provide a little bit more context first, so let's get into that. So you look at this competitive landscape and realize Uber's immense advantage in overall orders may not be sustainable because of how much money they're spending to maintain it. As a business, you get a lot of advantages from being first, but sometimes it's way cooler to be second and like a little better. 
And honestly, this is just because Uber didn't start food delivery in 2018. They started way back in 2016 and fought like hell to develop the delivery market. In a lot of ways, DoorDash is just drafting off of Uber's success. Uber Eats is slowing down while DoorDash is just accelerating. And so the main question then is, how can DoorDash afford to accelerate like this? Well, frankly, the numbers suggest that their customers simply like DoorDash better. Here's the most important chart in the entire video. I always save the good stuff for closer to the end. You gotta stick with me so I can satisfy the algorithm, gods. Thanks so much for being here, by the way. And look, this chart has a really fancy sounding business title, but all it really means is that DoorDash customers spend about 20 bucks a month more than Uber Eats customers. Which sounds really small, I mean it's just 20 bucks, right? But it's 20 bucks per month per customer, which in this world is basically an impossible ravine. It's really hard for a tech company to overcome a 20% disadvantage like this, because this chart is only going to accelerate all of DoorDash's positive trends. Remember, the most important thing businesses need is recurring revenue revenue, especially in this economy. And DoorDash's customer base is way more loyal, way more spendy, and way more reliable than Uber Eats' customer base. DoorDash has grown brilliantly in the US and forced Uber Eats to be at a standstill for market share in the last four years. I mean, Uber has its massive global advantage and double the number of restaurants that DoorDash has, sure, but let me sum this up so far. Uber is trying to be it all, an everything app for transportation and delivery, using tech to basically manage some of the most complicated problems we face every day. They win through complete domination across a bunch of industries. DoorDash is now describing itself as a global leader in local commerce, solving every city's last mile delivery infrastructure, one dasher and restaurant at a time. You can find lots of examples of both models winning in this economy in the last 10 years or so. And therefore, let's get to the big finish. What's going to go down this year? So let's go back to our profitability graph, and here's the plot twist. DoorDash is deepening its losses while just for a three-month period, Uber Eats became ever so slightly profitable. Not only that, but Uber made more money through deliveries than it did through giving folks rides at the end of last year, which is a massive shift. Uber is finally making money on each individual transaction action coming through Uber Eats. They used to take heavy losses on every order, but in Q4 of last year they hit a beautiful 0.2% profitability rate. Which I know is basically nothing, it's more break even than profitable, but it's still huge. And it may be a blip considering there's always a little more food delivery revenue in November and December, but if this little edge holds, it puts Uber in a huge advantage over DoorDash. So maybe DoorDash doesn't have the same growth and cost advantage anymore. Uber is only going to expand that profit margin, probably. But that's going to take time to bake out, though. So let's talk about growth instead and other areas where these two services are going to battle it out in 2022. This is going to come down to diversification and partnerships, from my perspective. If DoorDash is going to completely win, they need to apply their mastery of restaurant delivery and deliver similar margins for grocery and convenience delivery. Grocery delivery has absolutely exploded since 2020 you know, obviously. But there are a few key moments I want to point out. First, just check this insane graph out. Look how badly Amazon got punked by Instacart in 2020. It is a complete reversal of fortune, and amazingly, this is the one area where Amazon just hasn't completely dominated for whatever reason. Meanwhile, all Instacart really did was kill off Bezos in 2020 and open the door for competitors to do their job better, because Instacart has barely grown in the last year, while DoorDash and Uber Eats have popped off over 221%. I mean, there's a few other competitors mixed in here, but you get the idea. Meanwhile, right now, DoorDash stock is up a lot the week I'm putting this video out because of a new partnership they have with BJ's for same-day delivery at all of their locations nationwide. BJ's is kind of a small Costco competitor, which is important because Uber and Costco have been in talks forever about locking in a similar partnership for same-day delivery for all Costco stores provided by Uber. They piloted it back in 2021, but there really hasn't been much noise about it ever since. Meanwhile, this BJ's partnership puts DoorDash right on Costco's doorstep, as DoorDash already has a working relationship with Albertsons for grocery delivery. Regardless, all DoorDash needs is a few more small partners like BJ's to outcompete Uber on the grocery side of things. Which means that the final battle, and the most important one, is actually convenience stores, which have far and away been the biggest growth area for delivery in the last year. I mean, look at this graph. Like, it's genuinely amazing to me that everything increased in tandem in 2020, but everything stayed flat after that. Like, everyone who decided they were going to be ordering food and groceries just kind of stayed there since March of 2020, whereas convenience delivery has just gone 
out of control nationwide. You're already seeing the first shots of this battle playing out with Uber partnering up with BP and a few other acquisitions. DoorDash has the advantage here though, but we'll see how that plays out. Again, this is a battle of focus. Uber has immense leverage being double the size of DoorDash and being way more diversified. However, by focusing on shorter drives and local commerce, DoorDash is also going to keep its costs way down, both for them and for their drivers. Food delivery costs way less in gas than straight up ride share. Uber is already putting surcharges into its rides thanks to the spike in gas prices in recent years. This really may be DoorDash's moment to tip the scales and start demonstrating complete dominance in delivery. This is the grand final battle of a nearly decade-long conflict with dozens of pretenders cast aside by these two champions. I love a good war story like this. 2022 is going to be massive for DoorDash and Uber, and I hope you're just excited as me to watch this play out. Either way, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video here. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. It really helps us more than you know. If subscribing isn't your thing, I get it. Just drop us a like or hit us with a comment. Meanwhile, obviously this video was a little bit more biased towards DoorDash, and you can actually read a much more in-depth analysis I did on DoorDash over at Moby.co. Link in the description. Check it out. But do you think I'm being a little bit too pro-DoorDash given, you know, Uber's diversification? I want to hear more from you. Either way, if you're still here, you've done the one thing that helps me the most, which is watch these videos to the end. If you can always do that, even if you're not like actually listening, you have no idea how much that helps. The other thing you can do that I would really appreciate is share this video. Literally post it anywhere. You have no idea how much it helps. Regardless, I really appreciate you being here till the end here. Thank you so much for watching and listening here. And as always, I like to leave you with peace, love, and incremental gains. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.